It is 841 News Talk, Saga 960 Raw, Mike Richards, along with David Bastel, and of course, from the score, Tom Rominski. But, uh, I, you know, and look, he, and he loves his Jays. He's a big booster of uh, the hometown Toronto Blue Jays. And, and sometimes you just call them amazing. You know what? They truly are amazing. They're almost like superheroes. Because let me tell you what's going on tonight. I look at, at uh, I go to covers, and I see L- LA Angels at Toronto, 607. Six, okay, um, what? And then the second game, this is how incredible they are. Toronto at Los Angeles at 10.07. So they're <laughs> going to play that game, and for the second game they'll be in. They, they're, they're like the, the, the X-Men. I, I, I mean, they even, they even travel fast. Unbelievable, these guys. Can you tell me why it says home team, uh, and, and, and I'm pretty sure that they're not going to be in Toronto? What the hell are we talking about? What's going on? Yeah, so first and foremost, uh, Mike and Dave, it's a pleasure to always uh, hop on with you guys. <laughs> um, I, I think that uh, this is a good like uh, microcosm of just how bizarre the last couple of years have been for the Blue Jays and this season. Uh, so they are going to be the home team in the first game of a doubleheader to start off a four game series against uh, the Los Angeles Angels. And that's going to be happening in Anaheim. The reason why is because a game earlier uh, in a series in Dunedin was uh, was ringed out. And the funny thing is, as a result of playing at home in Anaheim tonight, uh, this is going to be the fourth different time the Blue Jays are a home team in a different city in addition to Dunedin, Buffalo, and Toronto. And this happened last year too. Uh, obviously, they played... Uh, in in Buffalo at Salem Field, but I believe there were also a designated home team against Washington in Washington and in Philadelphia against the Phillies. That's that's not good because (laughs) you end up getting that reputation uh, like that couple you invite over and they always stay too long. It's going to be like (laughs) Toronto's coming for a series and they go, you know what's going to happen? You know what's going to happen? They're going to say they're the home team. They're going to say that they're at home. This is not their home. Uh, you know, uh, why are these your friends? They're your friends. <laughs> you know, it's like a team that just won't go away. Uh, and maybe yeah. they don't go away. Uh, and we're kind of hoping that they don't. And from here on in, I hate to say it, Tom, but um, there are no games that they can look past. There's the, the Baltimore's, the Kansas City's, the Minnesota's. Uh, I mean, go through the, the teams you think they should beat. And now you kind of have to because you got Oakland, Boston, and the Yankees right beside you. Uh, I'm not really looking at you know them ca- cashing Tampa Bay. I just don't really think that's in the same universe. But a wild card is, and so you really don't have any. Well, okay, we can take two or three here. Or we'll sweep these guys here and there, uh, because guess what? Jays fans are looking at Oakland and 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 Boston and tonight the Yankees uh, at at Kansas City. D- the same scenario. Look past games, trap games. Super dangerous right now. Yeah, and you did mention uh, the Tampa Bay Rays. I'm actually not sold that uh, the division crown isn't uh, out of reach. Oh, uh, that, wow. Yeah, yeah. That, okay. that team uh, did lose their ace, Tyler Glasnow, for the rest of the season due to Tommy John surgery. I, I just look at their rotation, and uh, I think there's just a lot of frauds there. They got a lot of impressive young pitchers, but guys that have never been uh, in scenarios that they will be going down the stretch really uh, – really uh, intense games and they're only seven back of the Rays. And as you mentioned, uh, storming up the wildcard uh, standings, uh, they are three games behind the Oakland athletics and Boston Red Sox. Uh, After that incredible series, winning three out of four uh, George Springer with the defining moments of the season so far. Uh, So uh, that's, uh, that's great right there. And uh, I, I think that uh, you're really going to see a, uh, a big push by the Blue Jays coming up uh, in the second half here. In the last 42 games, the Blue Jays are 27 and 15. That's the best record in the majors uh, since the trade deadline. No team has had a better record than Toronto. They've only lost twice. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be fascinating to see how everything comes together. Uh, of course, uh, we're getting a lot of reminders from uh, 2015 here, how uh, a transformative deadline led to just an incredible run in the second half. And uh, I, there's definitely shades here. 
Yeah, no team has been better uh, than the Jays. You're absolutely right. No player has been better than George Springer. Back to back player of the week awards. Uh, this this guy has kind of found his groove, Tom. I, I know I know when he came back, it was kind of like eh, you know just feeling things out. He had all sorts of problems injury wise at the start of the season. We all know about that, but. This is the George Springer, the Blue Jays, and Blue Jay fans were expecting to see, and he's really coming out full value, isn't he? Yeah, totally. And it's actually a fun little tidbit. That's the first time in Blue Jays history that a player has won back-to-back MLB Player of the Week honors. And uh, he's been just a house on fire in the second half, leading uh, baseball in almost every offensive category including home runs. Uh, I I love the tweet from uh, the Blue Jays uh, social account the other day saying uh, uh, George Springer is, uh, you know, he he did a little running today and uh, his, uh, his quad looks good. And uh, I I thought, I thought it was uh, pretty cheeky because you can uh, look back to his uh, tumultuous starts uh, for his Blue Jays career. uh, Those nagging injuries, really uh, the team being hush hush about it. Players starting to doubt, Hey, was uh, doling out 150 million on a guy that uh, is past 30. It w- was that really a good idea? And to be frank, I knew that George Springer was a really good player. I did not think that he had this type of level in him. I mean, we do know that he was the 2017 World Series MVP, but for him to put this team on his back like he is right now, uh, I mean, he, he looks like the best hitter in baseball right now. It's, it's, it's incredible and it's sustained as well. We're not just talking about something that's happening for, for a couple of games or, or a week. I mean, he, he's been playing out of his mind for, for almost a month now. And, and if it continues, uh, I mean, that, that's going to be just rocket fuel for this team. Well, the intimidation factor when you're doing what he's doing, I mean, you start thinking about September and hopefully when you get something in October, it just changes the way that, the other team has to approach you because they pitch, start pitching around guys. They start, you know, messing around with rotations, uh, you know, pitchers when they come out there, like it does a whole lot of damage when that guy, you're afraid that the guy's going to like literally at any moment, pull the trigger and put that team in the lead. Like it's, it's, it is, a, it is incredible mentally for that game, what it does from a, a strategic standpoint, but they got a bunch of guys. The problem is when you, when you're watching that uh, series against Boston and they're losing seven, two, there was seriously a part of me that said the game wasn't over. I really yeah. felt like the game probably wasn't over. There's not a lot of teams that you think, okay, they're down five runs. And it wasn't like there was a second inning either. It's like they, you know, and then they cough up one. Now they're down eight, four. You never really feel like they're out of it. And if we're feeling that way, and I'm not hardcore baseball, I'm not an aficionado. I'm not, I'm not sitting there going to tell you what to bet on baseball. I watch it like a lot of other people do. Uh, I'm looking at this team now in a completely different light. The other thing that I'm noticing is the closeness of these guys. Like, they really seem oh, yeah. to be enjoying their company. And trust me, people are like, okay, so everyone does. No, they don't. Every team is not just like that. It, you know, there's like everyone's happy when they win. But what I notice is, and this is when they started chirping, uh, you know, during the hit batter in, the, what was that, game, game two, when the whole, <laughs> the whole team was chirping the Boston pitcher, and they literally, well, I was going to look like they were going to jump the fence, come, come out of the dugout. Well, they did. They were ready to go. That, to me, said everything you need to know about this team. Yeah, it's a really close group. Um, uh, first uh, and foremost, I, I really wish they sold replicas of the home run jacket because I think that's really <laughs> kind of uniting the team, and, and it's really the adding like a fun – huh? <laughs> exactly. Uh, and, and I actually – I think I saw a little kid with like a, a little replica home run jacket at, at the stadium the other day, and it's just super adorable. But I think it's really bringing the team together. Uh, I noticed a lot of the, uh, the, the better teams and the contenders – find these little things within the clubhouse and the dugout to kind of uh, to show off their identity and, and to uh, to unite the players. And uh, so I, I think that's really cool. And, and even you can see uh, a little sneak peek when a guy like Alec Manoa is uh, he has a great friendship with Hinjin Ryu going on now. And you can see the camera looking in the dugout and, and these guys are, ha- are having a time and, and they're laughing and they're, uh, they're, they're pulling pranks on each other. And then he pulls back the curtain and he shows you what the dynamic is like inside of the clubhouse after a victory. 
where you have fun Latin music playing and you got, you know, five, six guys like marching uh, in a line together. And you're like, you know what, this team, like they have, they have some serious love for, for each other in the game of baseball. And in the end, they might not make the playoffs. That, that's a reality of it because there are some really other good ball clubs out there, but just the growth that we're seeing on and off the field it is something really encouraging. This uh, this might be uh, the golden era of Blue Jays baseball coming up, and, and we're very lucky to be watching something special develop not only this year but for years to come. Tom, quick thought about the Angels. Uh, I know that Shohei Itani is expected to start game number four on Thursday. That's always a must watch. But where where do we factor in the first three games? Does he does he DH for the first three games? Is that how it usually works with the Angels, or does he sit out the game pr- uh, prior to his start on Thursday, which would be Wednesday? How does that work? Yeah, so uh, Otani is just such a fascinating case because uh, typically he does DH, but then they have him uh, come in and and fill different roles in the outfield and stuff. So he's incredibly versatile there. But uh, it, so Vlad, uh, up until he broke out in the last game against the Red Sox, was uh, struggling during the home stand and during the second half, at least by his standards. But Otani has actually been doing the same. He hasn't homered for his past 11 games. He still leads the majors in, in round trippers. And Vladdy is uh, second. But He's been uh, he's been dominating as a as a pitcher recently. Uh, he's allowed like three runs over his last 19 innings with 19 strikeouts. Uh, that's three starts. So you're gonna get that matchup of uh, the AL MVP front runner uh, against the guy who's trying to chase him down, and it, it's gonna be Otani pitching and Vlad hitting. I mean, I, I can't really remember ever having a scenario like that. I mean, you you have pitchers that are in the AL MVP or NL MVP conversation, but never a two-way phenom. So, so just the fact that you're going to see that it is uh, it's going to be fascinating and it's too bad that the angels uh, can't really uh, get it together. Mike Trout has been injured for, for, for months now and Otani best player in the world, a guy that he's doing things that we haven't seen Babe Ruth do. And quite frankly, he's, probably a way better player than Babe Ruth and yet the the Angels are just hovering around 500 but yeah Vlad Otani circle that date it's going to be must watch TV yeah absolutely yeah I also think it's interesting that you know Vladdy has uh, I would think around the league in different cities become the guy that maybe you buy a ticket to go and see when he comes to your oh, yeah. town I mean I I really do like for instance if you go back to some of the popular Jays and, and maybe go back to 2015 where Okay, if, 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 if Jose Bautista was coming to your town, do you necessarily buy tickets to go see him? I don't know if you did or not. I don't know if that was something that someone would sit there in Cleveland or, or, or Kansas City and say, Bautista's coming to town, we got to go see this. I don't know if that was the case. But that is with Vladdy. I think you do show up to see this, this, this young man play. Uh, he does things out there, and he made a play in the field <laughs> over the weekend. And I was like... Yeah, I know he's lost a lot of weight, but he's still a big guy. He's still a big boy, and he does things, and he and they're very natural looking. Like he actually is a very good athlete. Like he's a good athlete, better than you'd think. But the play that he made, throwing that ball back over to the pitcher to get the guy at first base, I'm like, oh, I'll yeah. pay money to see that. That's a ticket you buy. So, uh, yeah, I'm all in on watching this Jays team. I'm I'm I think that Toronto's thrilled to have these guys here, and they act like they're thrilled to be home too, which is nice to have a home, uh, even when it's in. Yeah. Anaheim, like it is tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I would just like to add, uh, in terms of Vladdy's defense, um, we all knew that he had massive potential offensively, but just his development in the field from, from being one of the worst defenders in, in his brief uh, major league career to now looking like a gold glove first baseman, I mean, wow, that, that really came out of nowhere and, and good for him. He put on the work and he's getting rewarded for it. Absolutely. Hey, Tom, thanks so much this morning. Always great to catch up with you, pal. I know we'll do it again soon because there's certainly going to be lots to talk about. So yes, we will definitely. always look forward to that and uh, do it uh, as soon as we can. Great. Thanks for having me, guys. Take care, eh? That is Tom Rominski from The Score. Our good friend uh, joins this morning. Always a great time.